Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 446 of the podcast. I like to call it, I'm just going to give it a name already. We haven't even really started yet, but this is definitely going to be the whale jet ski episode. The whale jet ski episode. Yes, I okay. wanted to start off our first episode of the year with a positive note. So today, our movie, which we will get to on the second half of the show, is the delightful 2022 A24 kids film, Marcel the Shell <laughs> with Shoes On. And if the words A24 film for kids does not excite you, check your freaking pulse. Yes. Because this is wonderful. Um, I've got a little six-year-old right here, which is just dying to try and get in front of the camera. I told her to give space. I'm, Hello. I'm not here. sure if that's going to work. Yes, I've, I've got I've got some kids here. So, uh, welcome to 2023, Bunny. Yes. Here we are in the future. Here we are in the future recording a podcast. Um, a brand new year, and that means we have a brand new chance as Americans to fuck everything up. Yes. Hooray! It, it, how wonderful. Everybody loves Marcel. Look at that over there. That's adorable. Uh, personally, I know that I'll have a better 2023 than my 2022, but hey, that's just me. But the, the odds are in your favor. You know, yeah, the uh, we might have to consult Vegas, but. Uh, yeah, I think I think you're pretty safe in that assessment. I need you to back up with that chair, <laughs> Eleanor. You are not a co-host. You are not a bunny. Okay, need you to chill. So, uh, we are a movie podcast, technically, because we talk about movies. We're a pretty bizarre movie podcast, but we are a movie podcast at heart. And as everyone knows, that means that we are legally obligated to start our first podcast episode of the year discussing the best and worst movies of 2022. The Podcasters Guild is very strict about this. Yes. They will send people to your house to break your legs. They are ste-ricked with a capital st. Fun fact, back in the early days of this podcast, uh, Bunny was actually doing two podcasts. I was never jealous, by the way. Yes. That just, that's, that word is not in my vocabulary. I'm unjealous, uh, funny, smart, attractive, humble. Um, the second show was canceled because they didn't do their favorite movies of 2015. This is true. Very sad. Uh, I know you're still upset about that, Bunny. It's, well, How? it's my cross to bear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, okay, enough <laughs> with my yakking. What do you say? Let's boogie. I tried watching Spinal Tap with the kids, and uh, I don't know if any of them cared. Really? At all. Yeah. I don't know if any of them really embraced the film. I really thought that they love uh, uh, Lick My Love Pump, but uh, that's, a, that's a big no. Uh, Best in Show was, a, you know, had a bit of a warmer reception. Well, it had animals. Yeah. So let's get started with our official definitive list of the best and worst movies of 2022. I've got, you know, the one movie 
which is the most successful movie of 2022. And then, of course, the biggest bomb. And feel free to add, put your two cents in here, Bunny. But uh, let's start with the best, because one movie and one movie only ruled movie theaters in 2022. And you know, you know what movie I'm talking about when people look back at 2022. One movie comes to mind because the entirety of 2022 belonged to Morbius. Yes. We're talking highest grossing film of all time. Uh, Highest grossing film of 2022. Number one at the box office for 87 weeks in 2022. They actually added more weeks in the year so that people could go see Morbius. Yes. It's fascinating. It made so much money. They just stopped counting. Yeah. True. They just said, this is too much money. So they just stopped. They said, you know what? Let's just say it made a lot. And they stopped. I believe I, I checked yesterday on Box Office Mojo. The cumulative box office total of Morbius is listed. And this is true. As a galloping shit ton. A galloping a shit ton. A galloping shit ton. That's that's a lot. Because it's not easy to teach a shit ton how to gallop. Yeah. And, and of course, more You have to have the shit, shit ton wranglers in. Yeah. There there are there are shit ton treats that are involved. Uh a few shit ton prods to try to make them gallop. Yeah. You know. They don't uh, gallop lightly. And of course, Morbius's success led to the biggest trend of the year, drinking blood. Everyone's yes. been doing it. The 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 you know, the big celebrities, Kim Kardashian, all the way to like, you know, Colin well, Hanks. Okay, well, to be fair though, they were doing that before the movie came out. A good point. Yeah. If there's one thing that Tom Hanks loves, it's just chewing on a baby. Yeah. Everybody knows that. And and hey, I know uh a lot of people out there just swear on virgin blood, you know? How tasty virgin blood is. Oh, get me a virgin. I want virgin blood. You know what blood I've been super into lately? Slutty ass blood. Yeah. You know, it just tastes different. It's like the difference between like Maxwell House coffee and a slutty Maxwell House. Yes. A Maxwell House that's done it a lot. Yes. You know? <clears throat> I just it it's kind of like the it's kind the, of like the, the Maxwell Guinness House beer. of Ill Repute you're talking about. Oh nice. Maxwell's bordello. Yes. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a different tasting coffee. And in all seriousness, it uh to go back to Morbius, I honestly and sincerely hope that anytime someone sees Jared Leto, like on the street, you know, you're in New York and you just see Jared Leto walking down the street, you know, strangling puppies. I hope that that people don't say, oh Jared Leto you were great in Panic Room. Or, uh, oh my goodness, Jared Leto, do you have any fun stories from the set of Fight Club? Were people doing pranks? <laughs> hey, or, uh, oh, you're my favorite Joker because that goes against the Cane Geneva Convention. Yes. That is not cool. Why are you downloading so many games? You were supposed to ask me. What? Your account on my tablet. So you're downloading all those onto my tablet. Yeah, that's how it works. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I love my um tablet to have no space. I hope. I sincerely, legitimately hope that whenever anyone sees Jared Leto in public, that it becomes a trend that people just yell at him 
it's more been time. Yes. How great would that be? That that is literally the best thing that has come out of this movie. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I am I, completely I, down with that. I it, it Oh man. My uh Did you ever see House of Gucci? That really sucked. No. Yeah, it was a whole bunch of nothing. Just a whole bunch of people standing around talking about what Gucci is. Gucci is about family. No, Gucci is about style. No, Gucci is about money. No, Gucci is about really bad Italian accents. No, Gucci is about hand gestures. What you talking about the hand gestures? <coughs> it's not about the hand <coughs> gestures. It's about the accent. Hey! So it, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. If anything, they should have got Lady Gaga to do uh, Mario because she's already got the voice. It's a me, Gucci. Like true, true. Lady Gaga's character in House of Gucci sounds more like Mario than Chris Pratt does in the Mario movie. That says something. Jared Leto that's, is that's a character. That's not hard though. Yeah, Jared Leto is a character in. Uh, House of Gucci, and he's annoying as fucking. I just want to slap him every time he's on the screen. I just want to have to hit him. And of I course, I do. I do movie. feel sorry. I'm sorry, but I do hmm. feel sorry for the pandemic movies, such as Morbin Time. Uh, and, and I think they should just get a, an immediate redo. <laughs> um I'm just thinking in my head of um you know New Mutants Take 2. Yes. Cuz that movie really got screwed over. Even Mutineer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and with Morbius it was like okay, so you're coming out before Spider-Man. So you're gonna have to foreshadow all the things that are coming in, that are gonna happen in Spider Man. Okay, you, now you're actually coming out after Spider Man. So like you know, in a month, so all those references, you gotta get them out of there. Yeah, I think a lot of the problems that people had with that movie and with like the the cameo of um, Michael Keaton and everything, like I don't think that's Morbius's fault. I, that's the fault of the pandemic. They got screwed a little bit in that sense. Yeah. Because they were supposed to come out before um, what? No Way no way Home? Yeah. It was supposed to come out like the month before. Yeah. And can we get serious here? Do the Guardians of the Galaxy know who Peter Parker is? Uh, yeah. I thought the... Oh, oh, oh do they know who... Do you mean did the spell affect them? Yes. Okay. Because I don't know if it did. I don't you, know if it did affect them. I think, think that if Star Lord has a range. Well, I what? think that I Didn't think that, that the spell was everyone on the planet will forget that Peter Parker is Spider Man, and it's like okay, so. Captain America will show uh, Captain Marvel will show up and say, hey, Peter, you, I think. Right. I think that's what that means. Yeah, I think that's my theory. That's my leading theory. I've been coming up with a lot of theories like uh, here's my theory about the Fantastic Four. Everyone's going to have a great time. OK, that's my theory. Try to give more positive theories. And of course, one of the movies that will forever be known as the biggest, worst, most shameful movie of 2022. Uh, only one film. When you think back at the worst movies of 2022, the biggest bombs, the box office failures, of course, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the massive box office bomb known as Top Gun Maverick. No one saw that film. What, and I mean what it, film? Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, uh it it came out this this year. Nobody really saw it. It was supposed yeah. to be a sequel to Top Gun. Who was in it? 
It was Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. And, uh, it was. It was. Tom He's like Cruise fucking the, eighty. Yeah, it was Tom Cruise and the Ghost of Val Kilmer. And uh, it, no one saw it in theaters, and I mean that literally. The total box office gross. Uh, it was released in eight thousand theaters across the United States. They built more movie theaters specifically to just show Top Gun Maverick, and uh, the total box office gross for the film was eight ninety nine. But that one ticket, that was Tom Cruise. Yeah. Seeing his own movie in an empty movie theater. So that one doesn't count. Fun fact, Tom Cruise is well, of 60 course, of years course, old. Of course, everybody, every single Scientologist was forced to go and watch Top Gun Maverick. Much in the way Christians were forced to go watch Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ, yeah. Uh... I, I don't want to see Top Gun Maverick because, as far as I can tell, it's straight. It's a bunch of straight guys that like having sex with women. That's not what the first movie was about! No. Come on! They should, they should have made Top Gun Maverick, but with cast members from RuPaul's Drag Race. I, I, don't, more I don't want to see Top Gun Maverick because I suspect that it's going to suck every bit as much as Top Gun sucked. Yeah. Top Gun but, so, Maverick is the same exact reason I didn't want to see another Ghostbusters movie. Uh, I saw that two or three times. And from what uh, I heard of Top Gun Maverick, they basically rehashed Top Gun. I, okay. The thing that upsets thank me you, is Thank that... you for the nostalgia for a movie I didn't like. Okay, gang. I have a difficult mission for you. You need to destroy this enemy base. Oh, really? We need to destroy this enemy base? What country is it in? <laughs> We need to destroy the enemy. Oh, where are they? The Midwest, the 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 Middle East, Russia, China. I did, 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 did. The, the Midwest. I think you have the Midwest right. <laughs> Let's just say it's somewhere, and not mention a specific country because, uh, welcome to modern day Hollywood. So, um. Tommy Cruz is 60 years old, so I hope you all love Top Gun 2 when Harry met Lloyd, because if they make a Top Gun 3, Thomas Cruz will have to be flying a fighter jet with a walker in the front of the nose of the plane. Yes. Here's the nose of the plane, and then there's a walker right in front of the glass. And then the difficult part it will be... You're driving at like you're flying at like supersonic speeds. How are you going to keep the little tennis balls on the bottom of the legs of the walker? True. If you're flying at these top speeds. True. I feel the need, the need for my heart pills. In a, <laughs> in a third in a third film, the bad guy won't be the Russians or some undisclosed Middle Eastern country. The bad guy will be cataracts. Yes. And and his uh and his sidekick shingles. It's it's good to see that Tom Cruise's Botox treatments have calmed down a bit since the mummy. Yeah. Where he was the stay puffed marshmallow man. And then the crazy thing is that he's still doing these Mission Impossible movies and each film he has to do to do all of his stunts and do different crazy, insane things. And they did this like teaser trailer that came out a week or two ago and it's just him jumping off of a plane and he's talking to the camera while he's falling and it's like, we get it. You don't want us to think you're old. You can stop. Yeah. The next film's going to be like Mission Impossible 10, just stunts. <laughs> just stunts and Limp Biscuit music, and that'll be the entire, the entirety of the movie. My wife 
Natasha, God bless her. She is trying really hard not to be ageist, and I understand where she's coming from because, uh, you know, I'm trying to be a better person. I'm, I'm on a road of discovery, and I'm just trying to be uh, better. I used to, uh, to quote the greatest TV show of all time. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. I used to be a real piece of shit, but uh, I'm yeah, not. You know, people fuck you. You were not. I was. No. Fuck you. No. You were not a piece of shit. Just because you're getting better doesn't mean you were some horrible person before that. That is bullshit. I hear what you're saying, and that's very nice of you. No one else is saying that but me. I'm not. You know, there's no one else that's trying to convince me of that. I'm convincing myself of that, but thank you, Bunny. That is very sweet of you. Why are you convincing yourself of such horse shit? Well, we'll talk about it later in uh, historical approximations, also known as HAP. But um, I, you know, this time last year, I was in a pretty dark place and I hated myself and I hated my life. And, uh, you know, I, I literally crawled out of hell. And now I realize that the me that I was in like 2020 and 2021 and uh, just didn't appreciate the life that they were living. And now I realize that everything is, every day is just a really wonderful, special opportunity. And I'm trying to be more positive. I'm trying to enjoy my life more, trying to uh, be nicer to my family and my kids. And it, it's been difficult, but I'm trying to just um, live a happier life. That makes sense. Well, of course that makes sense. Yeah. But I will try and stop saying that I'm a horrible person. Good. But stop. Thanks, Eleanor. Or or, or, but, or I'll get Eleanor to pinch you. Yeah. She don't she'll do it for me. See? Don't you dare. I will put you in a bear trap. I will put you in a bear trap. You are a smelly pirate hooker. Stop it. Eleanor uh, has now become my agent of chaos. 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 Yes. So, so my wife tries not to be ageist, and uh, uh, God bless her. But <laughs> let's all not forget that Tom Cruise is a Scientologist, and they are the absolute worst people, and they deserve no sympathy. No. Not a quarter, I say. And and I think we've all forgotten that. And we, we all need a reminder. Yeah, no, fuck Tom Cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bunny, when you drink Keef, do you drink it in a bottle or a can? A can. A can? Okay. Because a, a uh, can I think... that I can never figure out how to actually open correctly. Okay, I was asking because uh, a few years ago, you know, my wife and I uh, went to some weed a palooza or chronic palooza or something like that. It happens every year in Oklahoma, and it's a celebration of medicinal marijuana and, and everything. And um, I went to the Keith booth, and they I got a bunch of them. Oh, one of them just dropped. That's okay. They are um, rubber bottle caps, keep keep bottle caps to go on top of your uh, bottles of keef to keep really? them fresh. Yeah, I've got it. I've got. I, I I have grabbed a just a butt ton of them. I think I've got eight or nine of them, but I never drink keef. So I was wondering if you get the cans or if you get the bottles because. Uh, these are wonderful. They're really good for keeping your um, keeping your liquid fresh. It's because I can't be drink some... an entire. I can't drink an entire Keith without going to a different dimension for a day or two. It's got to be some strange law that m makes it have to be difficult to be able to open the can or some shit like that. Because we have a lot of just weird 
Claws. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a regular old can over here in Oklahoma. Yeah, no. It, it's, got a, it's got a hard plastic. I, I wish I could show you, but I really can't. I usually just pry it off with a knife. Yeah, because I don't know how you legitimately open the thing. Yeah, I like the bottles. Um, it's like a so, Rubik's cube of a can top. Um, for those people out there that aren't cool, like Bunny and I, we're talking about um, we're talking about Keef, which is a brand of cannabis. Sodas. Yes. I drank like this. I don't remember what the flavor was, but it was blue. Blue is my favorite flavor. Yeah. And it it all it tasted so good that I forgot that it had weed in it, that it was just a delightful soda. And I drank like more than half of it. And then I went to a different planet. I can't see how you can do that, man. I am like so sensitive to the taste of marijuana. And I cannot yeah, believe, me. I can't believe that after all this fucking time, like, I haven't acquired a taste or anything else. But, I started, like, uh... The smell is awesome. The taste is fucking horrible. Yeah. Well, I've got a, I've got a medicinal marijuana license, and I've gone out of my way to make sure that it's okay, to make sure that it's legal, to make sure in Oklahoma I can... <laughs> smoke marijuana any place where it's legal to smoke a cigarette i even got a note from a judge and got it notarized saying that it is legally okay for me to ingest marijuana for my anxiety and depression of which i have a lot so i i'm starting to embrace a, a little bit of my stoner side for the longest time i felt that marijuana was something i had to be secret about but I'm trying to be more open about it. One of my new things is I've got a ticket to go see a movie. I'm going to smoke a bit of a pre-roll right outside of the movie theater. Yeah. And then I'm going to stumble into the movie theater and then I'm going to watch the movie. I saw Megan this past week, the new murderous doll movie. How was I, it? It wasn't looking good to me. It was dumb and idiotic and stupid and ridiculous, and I might see it again this week. Okay. It's so dumb and stupid, I kind of freaking loved it. It's one of those films where it's like, they know what the movie is. Yeah. You know? You don't make a murderous doll movie and, and, and expect it to like win all the awards. These people knew what they were doing. I'm surprised it came out January and not February, but it it was it, it was it was dumb campy fun. I saw a review somewhere that literally said uh, uh that the movie was so campy that it that uh the headline was Megan is coming for the gays. And what? it's like I can kind of that it's such Same a anymore. bad camp that it's such a bad campy movie that it's that it's destined to be popular in the gay community. I read it from, I think, Pink News. Can you stop pretending to smell your stinky feet right next to me? Because you are distracting the heck out of my podcasting. Pretending to smell your stinky feet no, off of camera right here. I farted on their foot. You <laughs> farted on their on you farted they on your just, sister's foot. They put no, their foot I under farted. The and today is epiphany. Okay, uh, ten minute warning. Uh, I have a few other little things that I wanted to mention before we finish the monologue. Number one, it's screenwriting one hundred and one. Okay, it's screenwriting one hundred and one. Okay, you're gonna have a bad guy in your crime film, and he's gonna be like a like the the crime boss, a mafia boss, a rich guy, horrible guy, kills people. Okay, give him a big, massive, ridiculous sounding name. All right. But if it's a crime film and you're giving someone a uh, nickname, you have to may have it make sense. Yeah. Like uh, Johnny Two Times. Hey, I'm going to get the papers. Get the papers. Or uh, uh, Frankie Four Fingers. Okay, all of that makes sense. 
So it's like, okay, I'm writing this script, and here's the bad guy, and he's the 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 capo de tutti copy. So well, let's give him a ridiculous, dumb, stupid name. I don't know. Uh, Darius Emmanuel Grouch the yes. Third. Okay. But uh, when it comes to the nickname, okay, I'm also known as the Rumble. Why? Yeah. Why are you the Rumble? Do you have the shakes? You got you, 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 Does Parkinson's run in your family? Do you live in a uh, earthquake zone? Are you? Did you not enjoy the Nintendo sixty four until they added the Rumble Pack feature? Are, Are you a you big a... Jackie Chan fan? That's where I was going. Yeah. You got to explain. If you're not going to explain why he, his Darius Emmanuel Grouch III's nickname is the Rumble, then you might as well just name him whatever, whatever nickname you want. My name is Darius Emmanuel Grouch III, also known as Green Penis. You can just name him whatever you yeah. want. You know? Uh, and this is related to absolutely nothing. Uh, a real DJ non sequitur song here. But you know what trend I hope comes back in what? my lifetime before I die? Pole sitting. Pole sitting. The 1920s trend of climbing up to the top of a tall pole and just sitting there. Yeah, I, I don't know. See, I, I wouldn't watch that. I... I... Pornhub is a thing. If I want to yeah. see pole sitting, I yeah. can see pole sitting whenever I want. And okay, and finally, the thing I really wanted to talk about, uh, I wanted to talk about Jose Feliciano. Yes. Uh, did you know he wrote Feliz Navidad? I, I, I assumed because Feliz Navidad is overplayed so much every Christmas that it was just, I don't know, some sort of standard song from a long time ago or some folk song. But no, yeah. Jose Feliciano wrote it. That's his no. song. Yeah, I, I, was, I was under the impression that this was a, 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 a traditional South American Christmas song. Yeah, me too. But F, no, he wrote the song. Anywho, Joey Felici's. I've been listening to the Once Upon a Time dot 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 in Hollywood soundtrack just so much. I absolutely yeah. love it. I love the fact that they got actual AM radio station clips from Los Angeles at the time that the movie is set in. It's fascinating to me. Uh, 93 KHJ. KHJ Los Angeles. I am the real Don Steele. Um, the it, the soundtrack's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Ho Joey Felicis has a great cover of California Dreaming on the soundtrack, and yeah. I love it. I love it so much. It's one of my favorite covers because it is a perfect example. I have no other examples, but this one is a perfect example of a, a cover. Of a famous song where you want to distinguish your cover from the original by just talking a bunch of it. Yeah. Instead of singing the entire song, you just gotta you just gotta talk your way through some of it. So it's uh all the leaves are the leaves, the leaves are brown. And the sky, oh the sky is gray, because I looked up and I looked at the sky and it wasn't blue anymore, it was gray. I went for I went for a walk. I decided to go out for a walk because I had been indoors for a long time. On a winter's day, it wasn't a night, it was a day, and it was winter because the leaves changed color and now there's snow on the ground. California. Uh, I'd be safe, and I'd be safe and warm is what I would be. I'd be safe, I'd be safe and warm and warm and safe. If I was, if I was in L.A., which is where I would be if I was there, but I'm not there right now. I don't know where I am, but I'm not in a California dreaming on such a winter's whole bunch of stuff in Spanish. Hola, donde esta la biblioteca California? But it just sounds like he's in New York. Because New, yeah. New York is the exact antithesis. 
antithesis I assumed he was in of California. See, that's where you and I differ. I assumed that uh California Dreamin' was about uh someone in Kent, Ohio. Yeah. I just felt it gave a Kent, Ohio vibe. Yeah. But I guess it's not Kent, Ohio. I'm not thinking so, no. But we can't Ooh. we can't forget that he made up with it by singing his ass off on Chico. Yep. Don't be discouraged. The man he ain't so hard to understand. Danny, don't you know that you are cool as fuck on the inside? <laughs> I've been really getting into Ninja Sex Party lately. They are a wonderful band. I'm not saying that because I have a massive crush on the lead singer. So funny. Yes. We are going to take a short break because we record this on Zoom. And so we only uh, we record the show in uh, 40 minute intervals. They got us working in shoops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're going to take a short break, uh, show a little clip or two. And when we come back on to Zoom, we're going to be moving into historic approximations, or as I like to call it. Uh, and this week's going to be kind of different, kind of off the cuff. We're going to be talking about 2022. And... Uh, me uh without getting into too much details but we're gonna get into that so we're gonna take a short break but stay tuned because there is uh more of the pop on film to come after this do 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 this is uh the theme to the original tonight show before uh jimmy fallon ruined it do 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 and uh, uh, Jay Leno, for that matter. Yeah, Jay Leno, for that matter. Do 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 do. There was a clear delineation between David Letterman and Jay Leno because David Letterman went for the weird jokes and the crazy jokes, and then uh, Jay Leno had the safe jokes for everyone's mom. Yeah, and nothing, um, nothing says that better. Then his reoccurring bit, the dancing Alitos. <laughs> okay. The dancing Judge Alito from the OJ trial. And a bunch of uh, Judge Alito lookalikes would show up and do like a can can. And it's like, okay, yeah, this is safe. This is why I watch Letterman. Yes. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do. Skitty pop a do wow and break, and then this thing goes the. Whoop, whoop. 